Hello, everybody, to today's uh, webinars, how you can evaluate the real world performance of your uh, edge AI use case without actually need hardware. So as you may know, you can actually read the data sheet uh, from different computers, SOC, and many times you feel, uh, uh, find a number tops, which should give you an indication about the AI performance. But if you know a little bit more, that's not always reflecting what kind of performance you can get in the real world, as it depends on a lot of the architecture of this neural network accelerator, memory bandwidth, the model you use, the, the, the kind of thing. So in this webinar, we will show you a tool from TI, how you can evaluate that. And the best thing is you not even need to buy anything from that. You can just try it out. So my name is Daniel Lang, and I'm the Chief Marketing uh, Officer for Toradex. And I'm joined by uh, Pratik. Uh, he's a software engineer at Texas Instrument, and he will lead you through this webinar. Before we dive into the topic, a few general uh, comments. So at the end, we will have a Q&A. Uh, but you can already begin to type your question in the chat, bot, uh, in the chat box. So every time you have a question, just write it down. We will pick it up at the end. Also, if, if you have any technical issues, like you cannot hear us anymore, or there is a connection issue, feel free to use the chat, and we try to resolve it. I also like to uh, point out that we will record this video. So about uh, a week from now, you will also be able to watch that uh, video on demand. With that, I think we are ready and we can uh, jump into the topic. And I'd like to uh, hand over to uh, Pratik, who, who will uh, uh, lead you through. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks for the introduction. OK. Um, hey, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining today's session. Um, my name is Pratik, and I am a software uh, engineer. I basically work in the analytics software uh, side uh, in the Texas Instruments India. Uh, today, I will be talking about how you can evaluate the real performance of the AGI use case uh, use, uh, without uh, without the hardware. So this is the so let's let's have a poll. Let's let's try to understand how many of you guys are familiar with the uh, the machine learning deployment on the target side, or just the, just try to understand that you know how many of you guys fall into the which category so that I can talk about the. Uh, Presentation in that particular level of details. Okay, we have some data. Okay, as I can see, that most of you guys uh, falls into uh, the the category number three, uh, which is basically uh, getting started. So let me uh, let me frame my few of slides in that direction. Okay. So agenda for the today's session that we will be covering. Uh, is that introduction to the AI, a high level idea. I know that uh, most of you guys are, um, you know, we are trying to understand about this uh, space of AI. Uh, so I feel that, uh, you know, if we can cover our introduction in uh, with, with a brief, uh, it will be beneficial for uh, most of our audience. Then we'll, we'll talk about what is age computing is, that what is the age uh, definition means exactly. Um, also, we will be, uh, uh, so we will understand the example use case of the rapid prototyping of a deep learning algorithms. Uh, here I will be taking a real world example of a PCB defect detection. And I will be explaining uh, that how you can use the analytics tools that we offer in order to quickly prototype that. After that, we will understand that deep learning model compilation and inference flows that we offer as a part of analytics offering. Uh, that includes your model composer, which we are covering in detail, uh, then model analyzer, the AGI TIDL tools, and the last one, STIDLRT. Then we will also cover the demo video of the PCB defect detection, how the uh, end result looks like. I hope the agenda is clear to the audience. I'll move to the next uh, slide. So uh, broadly, uh, broadly classifying, there are three uh, different sets of people who are uh, who basically fall into the AGI category. Uh, they are the seasoned embedded engineers. Uh, then we have a data scientists or the AI experts, and then they are hobbyists and weekend warriors. Um, 
So the uh, you know the seasoned embedded engineers uh, they are basically diverged from the traditional signal processing background, um, and what they what they are more likely into is that they face a lot of difficulties when they are trying to deploy a particular machine learning use case on the target device. Uh, they typically struggle to diagnose a particular issue um, with the which is specific to the accuracy or the performance. The however, on the other hand side, the data scientist or the AI expert, uh, they are more focused on the design uh, design level of design level implementation of the solution. Uh, what they are more likely interested into is that the different types of trade-offs. Um, as most of the uh, people who work in the age AI industry are well aware of the fact that uh, there are always trade-offs when we uh, develop a particular solution. So one of the classical trade-offs that we usually look into is the speed versus accuracy. So speed and accuracy, uh, when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the embedded systems deployment of the machine learning algorithms, are inversely uh, proportional. So if you want the higher accuracy, uh, you will get uh, you have to compromise on the speed and vice versa. The last one that we have are the hobbyists and the weekend warriors. Uh, this this kind of, this type of people are uh, who basically requires uh, uh, the lo lot of examples, uh, sample documentations, and lot of learning resources to be uh, in order to understand a specific use case and then to in order to develop and work on that. Moving next. So now let's try to understand what is AI and deep learning is all about. So the definition of the artificial intelligence, uh, if you uh, so as, a, as you can see on the right hand side, uh, the artificial intelligence is the parent set of uh, it is the parent set, uh, and the definition of AI is nothing but the computers using human like intelligence to solve a particular problem, right? So any uh, so typically any AI algorithm is something that uh, that has human like intelligence which think uh, which basically uh, is being developed by by uh, feeding lot of uh, input data in order to give some in order to give some predicted uh, decisions. Now let's understand. Um, so machine learning is basically a subset of the artificial intelligence, and machine learning is nothing but algorithm that uses data to find the patterns in the in the given problem. Right. So um, the level of uh, you know what we try to do is that we try to feed lot of different types of data to the machine learning algorithm. The algorithm learns to figure out the patterns in the data, and whenever we provide a new use case or a new sample, it will try to uh, give some prediction based on that. Then th we have deep learning, uh, wherein which uh, the most of the TIS solution which currently caters to. Um, broadly, in, in very layman uh, term, um, what is deep learning is, is that a very large algorithm using raw data as input and giving some meaningful prediction on top of that. So machine learning, uh, machine learning provides significant advantage with respect to the classic classical way of computing, and they are the scalability, uh, the less R and D efforts, and the accuracy. So what we have seen is that from the last decade, uh, the the advancement and research in in the field of AI is very significant. The the models and the algorithms which are coming into the picture are basically getting more and more advanced and accurate over the period of time. So where do we use AI? What are the different use cases that where in which AI can be used? Um, so I have I tried uh, adding few of the example use cases over here uh, that that they are the advanced driver assistance systems ADAS the machine vision and then defect detection. Uh, the, the demo video or the quick prototype that we are doing in today's session is tied to the second one. Then we have security and home automation cameras. Uh, typically the intrusion detection use cases. And lastly, we have uh, the LLMs, right? So the speech recognition, text analysis, the translation, et cetera. And there are many more. Now let's understand why AI at the edge, right? And what is the definition of the edge AI? 
So H E I is nothing but running E I where data is generated. Now algorithms which runs on the embedded processor are the microcontrollers, which are connected to the uh, sensors who are capturing the real uh, who are capturing real time data. So the definition of E I states that uh, doing the computation of a machine learning or deep learning algorithm on the device such as microcontrollers or microprocessors where the data is being generated. What are the different benefits of Edge AI? So in order to understand the benefits of the Edge AI, maybe I'd like to take an a example use case. Let's consider that we have a self-driving car, uh, which is taking a decision of where to turn, where do, do I have to accelerate, deaccelerate, something like that. And what we try to understand, now let's try to, uh, let, let's say that if you don't opt for the Edge AI approach in this particular scenario, the, the only option that we have in front of us is to send the data to the cloud servers, uh, let the cloud servers uh, do the computation, get the data back from the servers and do the uh, and take the decisions. Now imagine that if you are driving a car at 100 miles per hour, and if you are sending the data to the cloud server, cloud has to process that data, and our car has to get back the data and take the decision based on that. So as you can see, there is huge overhead associated with respect to this approach. Uh, if we opt for the HEI uh, option over here, wherein which we can run the same uh, computation on the on the device uh, which is being mounted on a car itself, we will we will act, we'll able to reduce down the latency by a significant amount of factor. The second one is the privacy. So once we uh, so once we uh, send the data out of the device. Uh, you, the, there is no control uh, on that on that particular data, right? So now that we are not sending the data out of our device, and we are only processing uh, now only we are only consuming the data on the device itself, there is absolute uh, level of protection uh, which is being maintained. The third one is the uh, the uh, the cost which is associated with the cloud infrastructure. Remember that we are, if we do not opt for this particular approach, what we have to do is that we have to call the cloud APIs number of times in order to do the computation and get the data. So every every call to the API has significant cost, which is associated. And opting for the Edge AI based solution will significantly uh, help to save on the cost. The last one is the increased uh, support and the performance from the embedded vendors. Uh, the the devices, the hardware which are coming into the picture uh, from last decade, they are uh, so they are basically serving. They are becoming more and more complex to handle the uh, complex model architectures to give the best possible performance. Okay, uh, it's time for the poll. Uh, so, what is the most interesting for your project? The port slash optimize an existing ML model to TI hardware develop an ml model from the start or you guys don't know anything or no project at the moment okay let's see uh, okay uh, so we have a majority of people falling into the first category followed by the no project at the moment category sure so you guys are still trying to figure out what could be the best uh, project uh, for you guys in order to try in the future sure okay so let's come back to the slide deck okay now let's understand uh, prototyping of the pcb defect detection automation um so this is the example use case that uh, we have taken for the today's presentation um so our task definition is that to detect and classify printed circuit board defects by what this means is that to detect the type of the defect and locate using bounding boxes, as you can see on the bottom right of the slide. So what we try to do is that we try to, so the approach that we will be following is that we will collect the data. So you'll have a, you know, lock a few uh, you know, hundreds of the images uh, of the PCB defect, and you'll try to uh, feed, this, uh, feed this particular images uh, to your deep learning model. Your model will train, and based on that, it will do some predictions. As you can see uh, from the, you know, for the given uh, input uh, image of the PCB, 
uh, we are able to uh, the model is able to figure out there are two open two short one mouse byte and one copper type of defect with the exact location uh, using the bounding boxes so the ti's age ai um, what is the, our ecosystem uh, today uh, basically uh, supports a wide range of open source softwares that includes uh, the uh, open source runtimes uh, then open source libraries such as the tensorflow lite open neural network exchange formats tvm uh, pytorch and bunch of different our vision for the uh, age ai is to make AGI easy with affordable, easy to use, energy efficient solution platforms for the deep learning application using the TI's embedded processing portfolio. So TI's AGI today have open source Linux SDKs, which are available in the public platform. Uh, so this this basically enabled for multiple industry standard frameworks and then component with the AGI stack to run analytics applications with the real-time inputs and outputs. We also provide AGI Studio, a free practical embedded inference solution with a simple user interface that leverages the key open source frameworks such as PyTorch, ONX, and TensorFlow. I would highly suggest you guys to check out the ti.com slash product page to know about this more. Okay, so at the user level, there are uh, four different ways in which you can interact with the uh, analytics solution from the TI. Uh, for the start, for the people who falls under fall into the category of uh, beginner, uh, you we have a, a model composer studio solution, which is the uh, GUI based uh, no code develop no code based solution that basically can be utilized for your data collection annotations training compilation uh, for your for the selected uh, range of resources then we have a model analyzer uh, these are again zero setup web-based python notebooks uh, which are directly connected to the evm so as a user uh, you don't have to buy or you don't have to set up any evm by locally but directly you can connect to the evm by means of the model analyzer tools the third one that we have is the AGI Tidal tools. Uh, AGI Tidal tools uh, is basically a, a, a GitHub repository which is which has a code base in Python and C++ for model compilation and inference using the open source runtimes. Uh, the AGI Tidal tools needs uh, a setup. Uh, that they needs to have. They need a setup uh, options on the target uh, on the x86 machine. So we support the ubuntu linux as the host operating system on which you can set up the uh, agi tidal tools uh, repository if you do not have the desired uh, setup option at your end we do have docker containers uh, to get started quickly the last one is tidal import which is a text file which is a text file based uh, low level interface that we provide this basically falls into the highly advanced uh, level and as a in, as a beginner, uh, we uh, we uh, restrict you guys to uh, you know start with the uh, TIDL input. However, we recommend you guys to try using the AGI TIDL tools for your custom or specific model compilation. So now let's look at the model composer and model analyzer tools. So on dev.ti.com. Uh, and on the AGI Studio page, you will see that we have hosted model analyzer and model composer tools. So you can basically click on the model analyzer. Uh, uh, you can basically click on the launch but button on the top right side of your uh, screen in order to launch uh, launch the model composer or model analyzer tool. So before I dive into uh, exact implement implementation level details. I would like to talk about the uh, transfer learning concepts. Um, so the idea is that uh, when we train a deep learning model, which has uh, tens and hundreds of uh, complex uh, uh, you know, layers which are connected with the millions and billions of the parameters, uh, which typically are trained from scratch with very large data set, 
uh, something like Coco or ImageNet. What does transfer learning help us is that the full model that is being trained on, let's say, a larger or one million plus data set samples, uh, what we try to do is we try to freeze those bits and we try to re retrain with a small data set for a specific task. So we try to leverage the learnings of a fully trained model and we try to use that for a specific task. In this particular scenario, we only need 50 to 100 images to start. So now let's understand. Um, so now, now let's understand what are different types of problem or quick prototypes that you can do with this by using the AGI, uh, AGI Studio tool. Uh, well, you can pick any problem in in the industry. Uh, here are a few uh, starters for you guys. Uh, you can detect the defects in the large infrastructure building. You can classify defective products on conveyor belts, or you can detect if your boss is around your cubicle or not. All of those things are possible using the AGI Studio tools. And what it takes is that 20 to 30 pictures, and we just have to load those into the model composer, train and compile it, and run the live for us. So now let's understand uh, the pipeline into slightly more details. So the the so there are diff, uh, there are total five stages in the model composer studio. They are data capture, data annotations, model training, model compilation, and followed by the deployment. As a user, uh, you will start with the data capture stage, wherein which you can opt for different set of options, wherein which you can upload the data from your PC, and then we have a few other options as well. I will be explaining each of these stages in details in the next, in the next slide uh, video. OK, so I will be playing a video at my end. So whenever, so on the dev.ti.com slash AGI Studio, you can see that the model composer tool is being hosted. You can start with clicking on the launch button. And once you click on the launch button, you will see some GUI, uh, will, which will look something like this. So this is the starting page of uh, the model composer. As you can see uh, in the start window, there are three different options that you can choose from. You can opt for the example. You can choose example project, project as a starter option, or you can click on the new project, or you can import the previous project as well. For this particular video purpose, we are uh, clicking on the new project as we want to create a reference design from the scratch. Once you click on the, uh, the new project tab, you have to select the task definition. So for PCB defect detection, which falls under object detection category, uh, we, will click, we will click on the object detection as a task type. You can select the tools. Uh, we have different uh, range of the SDK tools which are being available. Uh, you, can choose on the, you can choose the latest one. For this particular uh, video purpose, I am choosing the SDK 9.1. You can give some meaningful name to the project. So I'm giving name as a PCB defect detection. And I'm clicking on the new project. As you can see, our workspace is being created. And the project name that we have given is the PCB defect detection. Now, the, as a next step, uh, as, a, as a next step, we have to import some image data in order to uh, feed to the model to get it trained. So we support a variety of options. Two of the options that we will be showcasing in this particular video, they are uh, importing the image data from your local PC. So I'm clicking, uh, I'm selecting few of the local images that I have on my PC, and I'm clicking on the import button. As you can see that I have imported a few images uh, of the uh, PCB board. Now it's time to do the annotations. As a part of model, as a part of the, the model composer studio, we support the uh, we support the annotation as one of its feature. In order to annotate a particular data, you just have to click on the uh, uh, square, the red square, which is located on the left top side of your uh, window, and you can start annotating the data. So as you can see, there are I'm clicking on the 
as you can see, I'm clicking on the different defects of the image and I'm labeling those appropriately. Now we will be showcasing that how you can import the pre annotated data set in the model in the model studio. So click on the import data annotated data uh, tab. It will pop you to the it will pop you to the location where you have to select the uh, annotated zips. So I have annotated dot zip as a imported a pre annotated data that I have downloaded from the open source platforms. So I will click on the annotated dot zip folder, which contains 1500 of those images. Now those images pre annotated images are getting imported in our data set. Now, as a next step, we will click on the model selection tool. Here, we will be selecting uh, the uh, we will be selecting the device based on the cost and then performance, starting from AM62 to AM69. After that, we will select the model from the higher accuracy to the faster performance. Now you can click on the training tab here. I have here. I'm selecting. You can select uh, how many epoch that you want to train your model. What learning rate that you would like to select the batch size and then wet decay parameter. And you can click on the training. Uh, you can click on start training tab. Uh, now, you, as you can see on the bottom right of your window of your screen, we are plotting the uh, the epoch versus accuracy graph in real time. So let our model train uh, to the desired level until we get the uh, satisfactory accuracy performance. As a next step, once we complete the training, it's time to compile the model for a uh, for a specific um, a device. So here I'm clicking on the default uh, uh, default configuration for the model compilation. Now, once we compile the model, it, we can click on the live preview button. So as you can see, I have uh, connected my uh, I have connected a camera to my EVM board, and I am giving live input to the model that that we just trained and compiled. Now, as you can see that we are downloading the gen uh, generated artifacts uh, to our EVM board and we are doing the live inference in the, in the real time. So as you can see that uh, we are showcasing the input image to the EVM, which is connected to the model composer studio via SHH connection. And it is able to predict the defects in real time as well. As in the last step is to deploy. There are a bunch of uh, options which are available to the user. They are, uh, you can download the train model to the PC or you can download the compiled model artifacts as well. Now let's come back to the model analyzer repo. So now let's try to understand that uh, how you can evaluate the models uh, using the model analyzer repo. Model analyzer are the repo which uh, so model analyzer is nothing but a, a GUI is basically a web based tool that we provide. So we host the Python notebooks uh, which are connected directly to the EVM boards. As you can see on the right hand side that you can you can see the, the model performance uh, benchmark directly on your target EVM. Uh, the inference per seconds uh, or maybe the inference time per image, a DDR bandwidth DDR usage per image, all of those parameters are being calculated uh, on the target EVM board directly. On the left hand, uh, on the left hand side, as you can see, uh, the predictions that our model is able to do on given input image are being displayed. Now let's try to understand the open source runtimes uh, support from the TI side. Uh, we, uh, the AGI TIDL tools, as I said, is the um, the GitHub repositories which supports the model compilation and the inference uh, with, uh, using the open source runtimes. 
um, users, you can basically you can you can use the different flags in order to do the model compilation, inference, um, etc. So hyphen C um, basically uh, hyphen C provides the model compilation options. We can al we also expect our users to try out the uh, open source inference without the TID offload using hyphen D as options. I would like to encourage all of you guys to uh, go through the uh, documentation of the AGI tutorial tools in order to understand the uses in more detail. Uh, here are a few of the debugging guidelines that we'd like to talk about. Uh, so as a part of open source runtimes, uh, we support a different range of the uh, debug traces. Uh, they are from zero to two to increase the logs at a different level. Um, there are two types of issues that the user might face. They are accuracy or the functional issues. And the second was the performance issues. We expect users to set the debug level to three in the model compilation in order to dump the layer level logs that will be helpful for a debugging purpose. For the performance issues, user can set debug level to one and uh, he will be able to uh, dump the layer level benchmark of the custom model that he is trying to evaluate. Lastly, I would like to talk about the model selection tool that we provide. The model selection tools are uh, the tools which are based on your benchmark and then accuracy data. Um, so at a very early stage of your evaluation, where in which you don't really want to run a particular algorithm on the TI device in order to get the benchmark data, uh, this tool comes handy. What you can do is you can click on the export data tab. You can select the desired, uh, desired task so that the all set of models will be uh, added uh, in that particular repository. So we can support, uh, so the model, the tool currently have uh, three uh, specific use case. They are object detection, object classification, and object, and object segmentation. Once you click on the export data tab, uh, user will be able to uh, understand the benchmark of the standard open source models which includes YOLO V7, YOLO X, YOLO 5, and a bunch of many more. Finally, these are the uh, end result uh, of our uh, model composer uh, pipeline will look like. As you can see on the left-hand side, we have used YOLO S Lite um, as, the, uh, as the model in order that will, uh, does the uh, object detection task. And these are the final results. We also have AM69 uh, doing 12 channel this. Okay, so those were the few of the slides that I would like to uh, talk to you guys all about. Um, yeah, thank you for your attention. Thanks so much. And I will now continue. So now you learned a lot how you can uh, use uh, these tools. And I will now cover how you can bring now a product to production and you know first get real hardware and then also bring it to production. So, and how we will do that is, or how we will recommend it, is that with our new Aquila AM69. So that's a system on module. Um, and I will show you how, how you can actually use that. So first, what's the system on module? So that's really something uh, where Toradex is strong in building the system on module. And the idea is you use these models and then you create your own carrier board uh, based on, uh, uh, on your application. Let's say you have a robotics application, you may need other interfaces, then you have a medical device or you just build a gateway. Toradex also provides some off the shelf uh, board where you can just plug this in to make you even faster to market. And all these off the shelf or are open hardware. So you get the complete Altium design files, you get design data and so on. So we wanna make it for you as easy as possible to design your own board, or we can do that for you, or we have a partner network. New Toradex also offers complete, complete product uh, with a case. Uh, so even in a box, if you say we prefer more, just have everything in a box, we can do that for you. Or we have a partner network, which also can help you with that. Then 
here up it's also a very important operating system so uh, even you want to you want to focus on the machine learning and the algorithm and the training you still need an operating system you still need to patch it you need to keep it secure and so on so if you work with toradex we provide that for the ti models and operating system you can ship we really focus on linux but we also have partner uh, with android qnx vxworks and so on and then also with Toradex, uh, you get even very secure over the air update system, remote access device monitoring. Um, yeah. And we will go now a little bit closer into the, the Aquila family, the AM69 here, which is by far the most performant module which Toradex provides. So if you're a little bit familiar with Toradex, you have different uh, product families. They're fully pin compatible, so you can scale up or down. And you can see here, for example, Word in a very popular family. Uh, we have with TI here, the AM62, really on the low end, if you have cost sensitive product, if you don't need that much performance. And then here we have different um, you know, models from other vendors. Um, and then you see here, Aquila is almost out of the chart, is much, much more performant uh, that. And we can see a little bit uh, here on the next side, uh, why. So the Aquila AM69 uh, fits the AM69 from TI, and you get eight uh, big A72 uh, cores. You get two real-time R5 cores. So for example, you can use them to offload real-time tasks. So you may have a, a AI model, but you may still need to control motors or, or stuff, which needs a very low latency, needs hard real-time. You can utilize this R cores. And then, of course, for that uh, presentation, I think the most interesting is the very strong deep neural network accelerators with 32 tops. Also, you get Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, extended temperature, right? And this module is really, um, you know, target, of course, for AI, but also general high computing, uh, compute, real-time control. Uh, we really see that targeting industrial pieces, lower end pieces, you can now replace with ARM system. So they're lower power and they have even more AI capabilities. And then other GPU uh, enabled embedded devices. So here we have an NPU. So we should be more power efficient uh, for the same uh, you know, neural networks or the same workload. Uh, we have a 400 pin connector, uh, an edge connector here. So very, very rocketized. And with that, you can bring out a lot of interfaces. So for example, five Ethernet ports, uh, we can drive 8K display, you can connect up to eight, uh, 12 cameras, you have PCIe uh, bus to further extend, and you have a lot of CAN interfaces, I2C and, and all of that. So that really simplifies your product as you have to have less you know, external Ethernet ports. For example, if you have a robot, which has maybe the motor controls over EtherCAT or TIA, uh, and time sensitive networking. So that's a very, very good base. Um, but also the camera. So most of the AI application we see, they utilize cameras. Uh, so one thing is really nice. It has an integrated image as uh, processing. Uh, so many of the new cameras, like the Sony sensors and so on, they do not have processing on the camera sensor. They put out the raw picture and you need to process that. Uh, the AM69 can directly do that. So that uh, uh, allows you uh, to be a little bit more cost effective and also work with much more different sensors. Uh, Toradex has a camera ecosystem. So we provide MIPI CSI cameras, GSML, FPD link. And you can see here uh, some of the brands we work together, which are really, uh, you know, they really know their things and we work together. So they're easy to integrate. So you don't need to uh, worry how do I get that driver running and, and so on. We also gonna launch that board together with a single board computer. So if you say, oh, I can uh, design that, and we will launch it uh, with a complete box. As you see here on the picture from our uh, partner, Connect Tech, uh, you can uh, have that. So it's even easier uh, to deploy. If you say, really, I'm, I'm not gonna deal too much with the hardware, we also have that uh, for the fastest time, time to market. Good. Yeah, so the next poll, what kinds so of you saw different ways how, how, how you can set a uh, hardware? How do you think you would uh, deploy uh, the hardware in your next project? 
would use a system on module and then build your own carrier board customized for your use case are you looking for an off-the-shelf single board computer you can just take or you need a custom made either you know from Toradex or other people or you would like the complete solution as I, I showed everything in a box or you don't have a project at the moment so so this is not really relevant good we see about 30 percent uh, voted and let's see here uh you know like the off-the-shelf single board computer is the most inter uh, interesting here and then uh, uh some sing uh, models the songs i would expect because uh, we reached out to i hope there's a lot of torex customer here um so that's that's very interesting and actually it was a little bit different than in the morning uh, where we also did the webinar where a system on module was was clearly uh, the favorite uh, so that that's quite interesting good Great, and then I was talking about software. So even your machine learning, and that's your focus, you still need the OS, you still maybe need to integrate with motor controllers, maybe still need the UI, and that's really also where, where Toradex helps. So we have this offering, Torizon, which is uh, based on Linux, uh, based on Yocto, but we do much more. So we help the developer to be faster. So uh, a TI already has tools, but we also work with Cute and crank and codices for PLC, um, you know, databases on there are the Docker containers, so you can really integrate them. We also have Debian starting containers. So if you come from the Debian world, it's very easy. It's integrated with Visual Studio, so it makes you very, very productive. Then we have a very secure way to deliver updates to the devices in, in the fleet. And we use a standard called Optane that's used in the automotive industry and is designed to protect against state level attackers. We also, we don't show it here, but there is also a very secure and reliable offline update way. So in case not all your devices are uh, connected. And here I talk a lot about security, but the most important for most of our customers is actually reliability. So there is a lot of layers uh, for reliability checks, rollback mechanism to make sure you never break a device when you update. And then you also have a channel back. So you get a device monitoring, a remote access, so you can troubleshoot uh, your devices uh, if a customer has a problem. And the device monitoring allows you to, to get stats from the device, uh, such as temperature, so in case customer running too hot, or you can learn if the flash would wear out. So if you write maybe by accident too much to the flash, uh, you would see, oh, if I continue like that in two years, my flash is wear out and you can make the, the adjustment. So that's really the idea. You learn about your product, uh, you deploy. And of course, with, uh, uh, with ML and ML ops, it's very important that you can update your neural networks because you will constantly improve that in a typical case. Also, I highlight the EU Cyber Resilient Act. So there is more and more st uh, strict uh, cyber uh, cybersecurity regulations coming, and this is really built to comply with that. So we do S bombs, vulnerability monitoring, and all of that. So if you use this TIAM69, you get uh, that uh, with the board uh, basically uh, for free. And here you see it a little bit different, a little bit more technical. I was already talking about the feature. One very nice is the subsystem update. So you can update like the microcontroller in, inside the IM69, the R5, or microcontroller on the system, or I have a camera that maybe has firmware. You can update that. Uh, so that, and that's fully integrated. So you can also define that the firmware is depending on application version and so on. And everything will always roll back in a usable form. Here you see we support, of course, our hardware, but we also have a community supported BeagleBone uh, things and, and other boards. Uh, so you actually can extend that. It's open source. Uh, so you can also do that uh, on other hardware. And Horizon OS is built with Yocto projects. So if you're a Yocto specialist, you can also just take that and customize it. But many people would just use the binary. And then we have a tool where you can adjust it for your carrier board for your needs. And then the cloud, uh, if you like to use our cloud, uh, you can do that. Uh, we charge for that a little bit, or you can build your own uh, based on the Yocto framework. And then you have an API, so everything can be controlled over API. We also have a web UI, uh, but if people have already their own cloud, they many times use the API. So just saying we not just you know get you the hardware, we not just get you the ML tooling, we also get you all the rest to go to market fast and then also to maintain the product in the field. 
Good. Uh, with that, I will go to the Q&A. So for people who joined late, you can put your question uh, in the chat box and we will pick it up and read it for you. So let's start here. Um, I don't have my own source of video footage for testing. Is there a place to go for free MP4 files that I can use for downloading stock footage uh, to get started with TI Edge Studio uh, and training models? So that's like more a general machine learning questions. But uh, are you aware of any you know tool where you can get like imaging? Uh, I think ImageNet, but more for video. Right. So. Uh... I mean, as for a training, you don't need videos. Uh, you will need the image as a you know input uh, trainable models. Right. So you can fit a lot of different images. Uh, there are variety of the open source data set which are available in the public uh, domain. Uh, you can research accordingly, and then you can use those uh, for your use case. Thank you. Uh, does Model Composer allow to make mask for segmentation? Yes, we do support uh, object detection, classification, um, and then object segmentation as, as a part of the stuff. OK, very good. Uh, I think this is uh, coming when you did the demo. Uh, from where did you get the annotate.zip file? Oh, OK. So we have created those uh, annotate.zip file. Um, we, um, I mean, there is open, uh, there is a uh, AGI GST apps, um, you know, uh, GitHub repo where in which this PCB defect detection, uh, you know, uh, the use case is being hosted as a single repository. Uh, and there you will understand like how we create an annotate.zip kind of a file. So there is a, there are a bunch of Python files that you can use for your uh, Coco to different uh, style data set conversions. And you can feed uh, inputs and then the text file uh, that you have for every image set that 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 is there in your training set, and in order to create a single annot annotation.json file that can be used, uh, which is compatible to the model composer studio. So I'll highly recommend you guys to go and uh, check out the PCB defect detection uh, GitHub repository that we host, uh, and then we'll understand more about that. Thank you. When can I buy the Aquila AM69? I, I guess I can take that. Uh, so we expect uh, to begin ship sample in September. But one of the main points for this webinar is really also uh, to show you uh, the HAI studio, where you already can try out your model, optimize, and get a feel for the performance before you have the hardware. Uh, but it, it should set, uh, begin ship in September. Uh, what does TIDLRT mean? And are the tools publicly available? Yes, uh, TIDLRT uh, stands for uh, TI uh, Texas Instruments Deep Learning Library Runtime, um, and uh, all those tools are available in public. Uh, the AGI TIDL uh, tools uh, basically uh, uses the TIDLRT at its backend, so uh, and you can go ahead and you know you can interact with that. Apart from that, uh, we we uh, we support the uh, Artos SDKs. So for a specific SOC, you can uh, check out these uh, Artos SDK offering that we uh, released in the public domain. And you can download uh, you can download and install the Artos SDK in order to get started with the TIDLRT directly. OK, thank you. As, assuming that I have a model on, Onyx, uh, do you provide tools to convert Onyx to TI-compatible binary? Can you please provide yes. some application node reference? OK, um, if you have a ONX as your model file and you want to compile that model uh, for in order to run it on the TI SOCs, um, I would suggest to check out the AGI TIDL tools repository. Uh, specifically, you can check the custom model compilation uh, tab inside that to understand how you can do the model compilation uh, for ONX format to the TIDL supported format. OK. Uh, hey, Daniel Bohr, TIM69 has de decoding and en uh, encoding capability or pure acceleration. Uh, so yeah, it actually has a video encoding and decoding. And this is actually, for example, an advantage to some uh, of the lower end NVIDIA Jetson uh, module, which do not have hardware encoding. 
Uh, so, because it's many times important that you also want to keep some media to improve your models and so on. So, yes, uh, the TIM69 does uh, has both uh, available in hardware. Uh, there are a lot of new camera sensors on the market today, and it can be overwhelming. How do I decide which one to use when I'm uh, migrating from cloud testing to cheap USB webcam to an industrial grade camera module? Um, I also think uh, I can take that. So really get in touch with us. So we work with a lot of the leading camera vendors and we can either get you in touch with them. They can really understand your use case and guide you uh, for the best camera. Uh, as there is a lot of things like sensor size, they have different noising, HDR maybe, um, and a lot of different features, a lot of different uh, interfaces. Uh, so I really recommend to contact uh, your local Toradex uh, office and uh, Torex actually has offices all over the world. Uh, so I'm, I'm here in the headquarters in Switzerland. We have US, South, North America, Asia, Japan, India, China. Uh, so really, we are very happy to talk to you uh, and also share maybe experience from other customers or uh, get you in touch with even better experts. Uh, then, which is the most popular Edge AI toolchain that TI has integrated? TensorFlow, Onyx, or PyTorch? Or is one better for training, for uh, deploying the training models? Um, as I said, we support a variety of open source uh, libraries. Uh, we also support most of the uh, open source runtimes as well, which includes PyTorch, uh, TensorFlow Lite, etc., ONX, etc. So there's no barrier on choosing anything. Uh, you can choose anything which is suitable for your use case. Okay. In university, I used the Intel laptop with a turtle box controlling it over ROS. When I use an NVIDIA SPC, I need Ubuntu for ROS, but it's hard to figure out which Ubuntu versions to run. How does TI integrate with ROS? I mean, I, I can answer a little bit maybe from my side, right? So mm -hmm. uh, as you can see, Horizon, uh, it actually uses container. So you can actually run ROS in a container and, and we do that. Um, and we really expect that uh, AM6 is going to be very popular in a robotic application. And so we actually do support ROS, so we have blocks and you can also expect uh, better integration uh, of ROS going forward. So we really plan uh, to support ROS, probably ROS2 uh, here uh, to go forward. And in, in our case, you can run that as a container inside uh, at Horizon. Good, okay. I think I'm more or less over, and I think we are also exactly on the hour. Uh, so last chance to uh, sneak in a question. But otherwise, uh, I will conclude the webinar. Uh, thanks so much, uh, uh, Pratik, to, to do the presentation. And I hope a lot of the people here will give it a try. It really only takes you uh, two minutes to, to log in and you know uh, discover the, the TI Edge Studio on your own. So uh, make sure you give it a try and make sure you go on our website uh, and sign up for updates for the AM69. So we keep you up to date and we will, uh, you know, you will be the first to get notified as soon as the boards are available. Thanks so much and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, bye-bye.